Endwalker is right around the corner, and a number of people are flooding back into the game across all levels of play. Others are taking the final days leading up to the expansion to get out of their comfort zone and try raiding for the first time. So I wanted to chime in and encourage everyone, get into raiding now. Now is the ideal time. We are currently in the final tier of the Eden Raids, Eden's Promise, E9S through E12S as they are called. These are the purposefully hardest fights of the expansion in terms of the Savage difficulty. Each tier overall is progressively harder than the last, which means if you practice on the tier now, come Endwalker, you will be experiencing a downgrade in difficulty. Though, don't underestimate the difficulty of those fights, they are still savage. The fact that this is the hardest tier isn't something to be overly afraid of though. If you have been keeping up with gear at all, you probably have a decent item level, reducing the difficulty without you even trying to. Further, the Echo is a buff you may have seen by now many a times. It boosts the stats of the entire party. Because the raid tier is considered over, in terms of patch progression, Echo is added into all of the Savage fights, so the base difficulty is reduced even further. So while it is still the hardest tier overall, the hardest fights with tight DPS checks and such, it isn't as hard as it used to be, making it far more accessible. So if you haven't taken the leap yourself already, now is the time. You can join the people learning just in time for the expansion, and maybe even get yourself a static to run through the new raids with. There's a couple of things to keep in mind before getting into Savage though. You can't just jump in and expect to win. Even day one world first raiders don't expect that. It's not a matter of having a guide, though watching a guide is preferable at this point. It's a matter of preparing yourself mentally and skill wise. If your goal is to clear, you'll need to meet the content on its level. Before you even consider getting into Savage, you may want to try out some extreme fights. They're a step below Savage typically. Often, the first fight of a Savage tier is considered high and extreme difficulty at best. So confident in extreme fights will give you an edge moving into the higher levels of difficulty. But before you even get to extreme, you probably consider bulking up on your rotation. Look up what is the currently accepted best opener study up on rotations in terms of using that opener, and check if there's any stipulations for the rotation, like a GCD tier, and then get practicing it. Make sure you can kill the striking dummies before even attempting harder difficulties. Stone Sky C isn't the most accurate measurement of DPS, but it does at least tell you whether or not you're generally doing enough damage in a vacuum. The trick is learning to keep your rotation up while doing mechanics. This is part of why you may want to start with Extreme. They are much easier to learn how to keep uptime, and their slightly slower pace makes it easier to do. The goal is to never miss a beat unless there is absolutely no choice in the matter. A bad habit people learn while leveling is to stop fighting when any sort of scary circle appears. You need to keep fighting while still dealing with any scary circles. This is an intrinsic part of knowing your rotation. But before heading in, there's other studying you can do too. Go do the normal modes. The footage I have been using is all the normal modes, but you'll notice that most of the mechanics are the same as in Savage. There's gonna be more intricate versions of the mechanics, less space to react to such, but a lot of mechanics are the same as in the story version. That's the big revelation for people, but when they are designing both versions of the fight, they design Savage first, then start removing mechanics or adding things just for the story version, more cinematics or such. Easier to handle mechanics instead of the super complex one. They work from the top down, so all the super difficult stuff that is completely unique and you've never seen before, you did see it. You couldn't help but see it unless you spent the entire mechanic on a black screen due to raising from a previous death. This is beyond the ideas I introduced in my Mechanics Beyond Memorization video. 
Not only can you typically react to a new mechanic in the same ways as any other mechanic, but it's often not even a new mechanic. The issue is Savage often adds several layers onto the similar or same mechanics. A three-part mechanic might just be one part in the story mode, or it could be three mechanics in normal you do separately, but in Savage, you merely do them all at once. You can learn to do Savage without doing Savage. There's always going to be those new mechanics, but there's enough overlap that you should be paying attention to what the original fight introduces. Especially, say, in E11 and E12. Every element in every mirror has all the same effects, respectively, but with a few more mechanics added on. Those new mechanics you can learn from a guide if you want to know ahead of time and get practicing in action. One more thing you may want to invest in before raiding is raid food. Also potions, but mostly food. Potions, also called infusions and tinctures, and maybe even some new name for it in Endwalker, are powerful buffs for your main stat. They have a long cooldown, but are significant when used in openers. This is mostly something to use when you're starting to push on a clear. When dealing with content this difficult, every second you cut off the clear time can help but before a clear, you just not use potions at all. But as I said, the more important thing is raid food. They have the highest item levels of any food. They can be pretty expensive, but they're extremely useful. They last for 30 minutes, 45 with the tier 3 free company buffs, and slightly boost your stats. But one of those is vitality, and every point of vitality is a step towards living through a mechanic that wasn't properly mitigated enough. You may even survive some mechanics meant to kill you when combined with the Echo. The cost is much lower than investing in potions, and will have much more tangible benefits when progressing through raids. So now we're finally getting into the actual fighting. Let's take a moment for talking about the differences between Pug and Static. Pug is short for Pickup Group, no, it's not a small lapdog. Basically, any random duty finder or party finder group you end up with is a pug. Which also, focus on using party finder for finding extremes and raids. Perhaps one day there will be a shift in using duty finder, but for now, people tend not to use the raid finder or duty finder alone. Maybe Endwalker will have that shift? Statics, meanwhile, are as they are named, static. They will bring in the same players to every raid, at the same time every night scheduled. It's a more rigid system, but it comes with its own benefits. You might make friends. You don't have to worry about if the group you're running with today is better or worse than the one from yesterday. Loot will be better shared between members of the group. But at the same time, you tend to raid a lot less than if you just pug when you have time. Some statics might put in 20 hours a week, but others might only do like 9 hours a week. It depends from static to static. You may also still run into rude or bad players. No matter what, you're dealing with people. But if the idea of a static sounds good to you, you may want to start putting yourself out there. Search for statics or advertise yourself on Party Finder, or the Reddit for recruitment, or one of the many discords made for recruitment. There's a lot of options out there. Just make sure you're properly advertising yourself. Don't lie about your skill level, include what schedule you can play on, etc. Getting a group is one thing, but if you aren't a fit for it because you lied about your status, it's not good. You likely will end up pugging for a bit before trying to find a static, I suspect. In which case, I have a different ordering for fights you should do. Personally, I don't think the difficulty curve of this tier is a line going upwards. It's more like a J. The end of the J at the bottom is E9S. The dip downwards is where E10S and E11S sit, and E12S is way up near the top of the J. This is my personal feeling, others may disagree. Generally though, I recommend players start on E10S, Litany. When a raid tier is currently quote-unquote active and loot locked, you must do the fights in order. You cannot skip around. But while we have the option, skip around. Do E10S first, as it is the easiest fight of the tier, I'd say. I would say E11S is also easier than 9, 
but the DPS check is also much tighter. So go from 10 back to 9, then to 11, then finish off with the trouble that is 12. Most tiers end up having a sloping upward curve, but the J that is Eden's Promise is something I've believed since I started running it. And now finally, let's take a short talk to talk on Pandemonium. This is the raid series for Endwalker. You will have about a month to level up, practice your new rotation, and prepare for Savage to release. Take your time to find what jobs you enjoy, what you want to play, and invest your time into learning those rotations on a deeper level. The story mode raids won't even release for two weeks of Endwalker launching, so you can't even practice the raids for a while. Two whole weeks to practice any job changes, and then two whole weeks to gear up further and practice those rotations in the new raids story mode, and get the mental prep for it to come out. Again, it will be the easiest tier of the expansion. It will be much easier than the current tier we have, but it is still savage. The final fight of each tier is still extremely brutal. Third fight of a tier is usually also pretty intense, and it's only easier so you can get used to the new rotations. Clearing quickly and without farming up a lot more gear over the weeks requires you to master your rotations sooner than later. You don't need to aim for mastery immediately, but the better you get, the better the rating will go. If you want to be going into it with a static, now may be the time to get started on practicing and looking for one. Expansion launches are a boom of activity, so many people coming back to play, which means a lot of options for you. Thank you for watching my quick little talk on getting into Savage. People should be encouraged to get into Savage, but I also wanted to warn you, some level of effort is needed to clear. If you get a static that is all about just hanging around, chatting, and making jokes, and not progressing, good for you guys. Long as you're having fun. Just make sure you're all on the same page and that is what you want. Don't hold it against each other if goals don't align. But if goals aren't aligning, it's clear you aren't meant for each other. Get out sooner rather than later. Don't try and change people if you're the odd man out. But anyway, take care and may the power of Anna Nidhogsley waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon. And the extra extra special thanks to... Ayman al Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Crikey Mate, Dimitri Shibanov, Ethan, Ethan Olsen, James, Kevin Lowe, Kyle Steinhauser, Mizella, Scott Stanley, T Rogue, Ticklefinger, and Valor LLC. Thank you all for watching, links down below, all that good stuff, and see you next time.